Good afternoon everyone and welcome to National Pick Day 2022 in association with Canada's very own Tree Picks. I'm John Tron Davidson from Heavy Repping and I'm here to give you some serious facts about the greatest community on earth, the Plectroverse. Don't forget to use the National Guitar Pick Day hashtag when sharing your pick stories on social media and make sure to tag Tree Picks and Heavy Repping for maximum community impact. With the Plectrum being defined as a small piece of material used to strike a string, it should come as no surprise that the pick didn't emerge as we know it today. The lute used ostrich quills, the sitar, the zuryab, and the Japanese shamisen, the wonderful bachi. All of these are very much in circulation today, uh, as are their contemporaries f used for the balalaika, the baklama, the pipa, the ruan, and so on. The oldest example of a pick in the modern style can be traced back to the Cristofaro in 1881. This is the oldest example to be found and hails from an era when the mandolin was the dominant instrument in the orchestra. Fernando de Cristofaro was a Neapolitan mandolin teacher and touring musician, born in Naples but settling in Paris in 1879. His first book was published in 1883 and he died in 1890. His is the first pick with an artist's name and place on it and was designed exclusively for the mandolin. Although it's typical to associate Jim Dunlop with the globalisation of picks in the modern era. The groundwork for this enormous achievement was laid by a number of other people. David W. Barnes developed a leather and celluloid pick in 1903, and Charles F. W. Seidel's multi-point pick originated in 1904, with Frederick Wall developing a concave disc system to aid with grip going back to 1896, and this would remain in the Sears and Roebuck catalogue for some years to come. The first person to standardise the disparate shapes of the Plectroverse was Luigi D'Andrea, who chose to use the hammer die designation as the naming system for picks going from 1922 onwards. This is where the 351, 346, 355 naming system comes that is still prevalent today. This was all great, but it was Nick Lucas's massive breakthrough in 1929's Gold Diggers of Broadway that really cemented the guitar and the pick as something to be thought of in the modern era. Lucas came up as a banjo and guitar player in New Jersey, and he was the first person to record solos onto wax cylinders for the Pathé label. His flat pick style and the monumental success of Tiptoe Through the Tulips meant the dawn of a new age for the guitar, which had previously been very much of an orchestral backing instrument. Throughout the 1930s and the 1940s, the 351 was known as the Lucas shape, something that only changed with the advent of Fender's handsome run of celluloid picks in the 1950s. Japan's Pick Boy joined the game in 1967, and by the time Dunlop manifested the colour-coded Tortex series in 1981, the electric guitar had been very firmly established. Speaking of the origins of celluloid, it was one John Wensley Hyatt, a printer and blacksmith son who stumbled across the material we'd know as celluloid in 1870. Hyatt was treating a wound with camphor ointment and collodion, which is derived from nitrocellulose, and this had been very widely used in the American Civil War on the battlefield as a waterproof bandage. He was attempting to win $10,000 from the Felon and Colander Company, who were looking to solve uh, the ivory shortage that was affecting their pool ball business. And it was during this process that Hyatt discovered the bandage that he had on was much harder than it should have been. Mixing camphor with nitrocellulose under heat and pressure produced what we now know today as celluloid. Now Hyatt tried using this for the pool balls and even for teeth, but the constant explosions from sudden impacts did render this untenable. Nevertheless, the pliability and aesthesis of celluloid made it perfect for crafting anything from combs to shoehorns and mirror surrounds, and eventually made the move to picks at the very end of the 19th century. There's only a handful of books on picks out there in the community. Will Hoover's Picks the Story of Celluloid, Brian Bouchard's Guitar Picks of Rock and Roll Volumes 1 and 2, and Talaba Nimrod's Plectrum Park, which was very recently released. Hoover's book is essential for anyone wanting to study vintage plectrology, as well as to know the story of celluloid and where it came from, which is a massive thing in and of itself. Plectrum Park is a study of the pick primarily in the modern era, and Bouchard's book deals primarily with celebrity plectrums, the second edition being full of quotes from collectors and enthusiasts such as the late Joe Macy and me. Speaking of the late Joe Macy, his is an enormous 
sphere of influence and he was not only a guiding light in the vintage community uh, but a mentor to people like myself uh, getting into the Plexiverse as a whole. He was considered to be the apex collector in the vintage scene and his channel on YouTube is a truly massive archive of plectrology dating from the aforementioned Cristofaro through Japanese only picks, uh, court grips and dozens of people you've never heard of. He is deeply missed by his peers Brian Bouchard, Guy Devilles, Jeff White, uh, Tina Holmes and the entire pit community as a whole a true pioneer in the field and his passion is something to aspire to so I will leave links to that in the description below. While the majority of shop stock plectrums worldwide are injection molded, makers favour a number of other techniques when producing the pieces that we all use. CNCing, hand shaping, file work, buffing and extensive sandpaper treatment are commonplace as is laser engraving, resin pouring, clamping and more. This disparity in techniques stems from the sheer breadth of materials now available in the pit community. Celluloid dominated the late 19th and early 20th century with nylon joining the party along the way, and the present day offers everything from acrylic to acetyl, bone to brass, tagua to titanium, agate to polycarbonate and rich light to resin. Every material offers a different grip, tonality, durability and character, and presents all sorts of challenges when it comes to tooling. It's impossible to overstate the number of makers, models and options now available in Pit World. Whatever you want, it's available and if it isn't, there's a whole community of people ready to help you make it. If I may be serious for a moment, the guitar pick isn't just a tool for making music. The modern musical landscape would be fundamentally different without it, and the techniques that developed around its varying dimensions, materials and eras have continued to shape music and popular culture in all directions. Plectrum's ties to bandmates, gigs, experiences, celebrity meetings, personal developments and periods of time. So let's take the day to celebrate the pick and all it stands for. I've been John Tron Davidson from Heavy Repping and this is National Guitar Pick Day 2022. Thanks very much for watching and just remember if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy. I'll see you soon.